Welcome to my channel. Today we will study different types of spectra like emission and absorption spectra. Moreover, we will also differentiate between a continuous spectrum and line spectrum. Line spectra are used to identify elements and hence to deduce which elements are most commonly present in the stars. Whereas absorption spectra are very useful for astronomers. The absorption lines in the spectrum of a star or galaxy give us a fingerprint of the elements present. If the Doppler effect shifts this fingerprint to a longer wavelength, we can calculate how fast the star or galaxy is moving away from us. A continuous spectrum like the spectrum of white light shows that it consists of a range of wavelength from around 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters for violet to around 7 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters for red. When white light splits up into a continuous spectrum as it passes through a diffraction grating, each color has a unique wavelength. If the source is narrowed and is viewed through a diffraction grating, a line spectrum is seen. These are also known as emission line spectra and show the composition of light emitted by hot gases of the elements. As an example, there are three examples here. This one is emission line spectra from mercury. This one is from helium and this line spectra is that of from cadmium vapors. Now absorption line spectra. When white light is passed through cool gases like cool mercury vapors and then through a diffraction grating, an absorption line spectrum is formed. Certain wavelengths are absorbed, hence black lines appear in the continuous white line spectrum. Now when the light from stars like sun is analyzed, we observe absorption line spectrum. Light of all wavelengths in the visible range is emitted as the interior of the sun is very hot. This light has to pass through the cooler outer atmosphere or layers of the star. Cooler atmosphere absorbs some specific wavelengths showing dark lines in sun spectrum as shown in this diagram. Now question number one figure shows part of the energy level diagram of an imaginary atom the arrows represent three transitions between the energy levels these three arrows a b and c for each of these transitions you need to calculate the energy of the photon calculate the frequency and wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation emitted or absorbed and c part is state whether the transition contributes to an emission or an absorption spectrum. This diagram is not too scale. So this energy is given in joules and just see the direction of the arrows. Here it is upward and in first two cases the direction of the arrow is downward. Kindly note that the energy goes on decreasing from upward to, to downwards. Okay. So these energy levels are higher states and this is the lower energy state. So in A and B what happens? Electrons jump from higher energy states to lower energy states. And in C part where the arrow is in the opposite direction what happens? Electron jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. So in order for the electron to jump from a lower energy level to higher energy level obviously it has to absorb a photon right? So in this case, you will see that in C part, you will answer in such a way like this is refers to absorption spectrum and these A and B will be emission spectrum. And let's see how we calculate the energy of the photon and frequency and wavelengths in each case. And in this case, I will just mention in the next slide that basically you need to know two equations. One is Planck's equation E is equal to H nu. And second one is famous wave equation C is equal to nu lambda. I will explain these two in the next slide because only these two equations will be needed to calculate the energy, frequency and wavelengths. So as I have mentioned already that we will make use of Planck's equation and famous wave equation in order to find out frequency and wavelengths. And to find out the energy of each transition, we will actually calculate the difference of energy between each transition A, B and C as shown in the previous diagram. And it must be noted that energy of the electron in the atom is said to be quantized. 
that is has discrete values only this is the most fundamental statement of quantum mechanics that we have already studied so many times earlier so based on the previous explanation the energies in three cases comes out to be equal to these values and frequencies and wavelengths are calculated using planck's equation and as i have already explained that transition a and b correspond to emission spectrum and c is absorption spectrum because in c part electron has to absorb some photon in order to jump in from lower energy level to higher energy level question number 2 figure shows another energy level diagram in this case energies are given in electron volts see the label from the list below state which photon energies could be absorbed by such an atom 6 electron volt 9 electron volt 11 electron volt 20 electron volt 25 electron volts 34 electron volts and 45 electron volts now based on the idea of energy levels we will calculate the energy of two between each transition by taking the difference of energies here labeled here okay though this diagram is not two scale but we need to calculate the magnitudes of the energy only because energy is a scalar quantity okay so it doesn't matter it's two scale or not two scale so in the next slide i have calculated the result of the question and you will see that there are two values only which do not correspond to any transition okay so by looking at the diagram you can see that 9 electron volts 11 electron volts 25 electron volts 34 electron volt and 45 electron volt from the given list correspond to differences between energy levels so they can all be absorbed whereas 6 electron volt and 20 electron volt do not correspond to differences between energy level and so cannot be absorbed thank you for watching